I usually try to cook big on Saturdays. Um, so that way we have lunches and stuff to start the week out. Good morning and welcome back to Life in Every Season. Kelly and I are gonna show you some of the chores we do on a daily basis. This is something we do whether we're working from home, which we do most of the time, or it's a Saturday or a Sunday. One of the first things we do is walk out, take a quick look at the fence, electric fence around the chickens, and then, Kelly, if you'll stand back there, and I'll point, I look real quick and make sure this green light is flashing. Um, this is the battery that runs the electric fence. If it's got a green light and it's flashing, it's good. So that just takes, you know, 30 seconds or so to do. And we'll take you down to the hoop house because that's the next item on the list. We got these great little baskets. Um, from our daughter. We've got two of them. These are great. We Any uh, vegetables we get out of the hoop house, we use these, walk them up to the house, and then just take them back. But it's been, just little things like this make it so much nicer. So, we're gonna open the doors. Now we're opening and closing this every day. We haven't had any trouble with <clears throat> rabbits or any animals other than our cats. And I think the cats are deterring the um, any rabbits. Um, but I know a lot of folks open these and just leave them open all summer. But we've had good luck with opening and closing this on a daily basis. We'll just show you half of it. <clears throat> on the films and of the opening and closing but I learned from Ben at Holler Homestead we watch a lot of other homesteaders it, when you grab the plastic kind of tuck it under instead of this way because if it rains it doesn't make a big place to catch water and it's real quick just grab the bottom and tuck and push up and I have found we only need to put this one, whatever this is called. <laughs> it just keeps the plastic from falling. And there's three on each side, but the center one's all we really need. And there we go. We will repeat on, I'll repeat on the other side. And this is mainly my job. Um, like I say, every morning and evening, it's about five minutes. That's the start to the day. Check on the chickens, look at the fence, look for a green dot so the battery's good, and then we'll go about our day. Another part of our daily routine is we need to eat, and I like to cook. So um, I'm gonna show you a dish that I recently got sent to me an email. It's actually from, um, it's called easiereats.com and they just sometimes send me you know recipes and this one is actually a one pot chicken piccata now i love lemons and so this recipe is hopefully going to be good i'm not tried it before i love the fact that i can throw it in the crock pot because as soon as i get this done i've got a 25 pound box of tomatoes to work through and get in the jars as well as some that are defrosting in the sink so the first thing i have in here is i have um chicken thighs now the recipe calls for chicken breasts but we really don't enjoy those as much as we we're, we're dark meat kind of people we like the the fattier pieces of chicken um, it also calls for three shallots but if you look very closely that is a monster shallot so i'm only going to use this one instead of three it calls for um three cloves of garlic but I'm using my garlic and the cloves are so tiny but they smell so good so I'm using just one little whole head um, half a cup of lemon juice which I'll go ahead and do that now it also calls for lemon slices um, capers chicken broth butter and I'm gonna serve this over 
pasta tonight. And hopefully I got a half a cup of lemon juice here. But I like these one pot meals, especially during the harvest season. It just makes life a lot easier. That looks about like a half a cup. We're going to go with it. Strain out those seeds. I might need another one. That doesn't look like a lot. I'm going to go ahead and do a second one. I'm cut this baby in half. We'll do just half of it. And I'll use the rest of that lemon as my lemon slices. This is the coolest citrus juicer. I found it at an antique shop. And it just reminds me of those 1950s kind of vibes. It's glass and it's pretty. But I got it for like four bucks at an antique shop. And I use it constantly. It has been the best deal that I found. It's a good kitchen gadget. I have one of those little press things that you can press them. But sometimes, depending on how tired I am and how much work we've done out in the yard or done at work, my hand strength can kind of go and I don't really like those types. So this is a lifesaver. It's great. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and I have this guy here. I'm slicing up the slices. And I'm just going to sprinkle those over the, the chicken thighs. Uh, no, I'm not going to use the garlic press. These are too tiny. And I'm not really going to chop these up because they're so tiny. I'm just going to mash them real good so we can get the flavor. And throw those in. And then I'll cut up my shallot. I know I'm not a professional onion cutter. I just... Unless it's something that has to be precise, I just cut it however I feel like. I know there's a specific way to do it properly, but I don't. This is all going to cook for about five hours on high in the crock pot. And we will have dinner for tonight. So once I have all of this done and in the crock pot, we'll come back around to you and I'll show you the finished product. All right, one of the other things we do throughout our day when we're home, which is all but one day a week, uh, we gather eggs around lunchtime, and we'll take you over here. Again, I'm taking a look at the fence, and I'll check the battery charger. Now, I forgot today and went ahead and collected the eggs, and we got one that's broody, so she's pulling out her belly feathers and putting them down, and... <laughs> She's usually sitting on the eggs, so you have to move her. Luckily, the, the uh, chickens are very gentle and good-natured. The other thing usually I do at lunch, I check their food and water. And I like this setup because we've mentioned before, I can um, step here. The chickens are in here, so there's no manure, but I can reach in. I can check the feed. I can add to it. And I'll grab the water. It's light, so I'm going to change this. I'll change the water and I'll put it back in. And that's really it for the day. As we come out, we'll continue to look at the fence and just get a, you know, take a peek at them, make sure they're doing okay. But the chickens have been really low maintenance in this setup. All right, it's just after lunch. I had another project since it's Saturday. Um, I've been wearing shades because I had. I know now I know way more about INATs uh, here in the mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina and further south. These things dive bomb your eyes. I've got a lot of eye irritation. I read the females have like spurs on their legs. So my eyes really red and irritated. I made a quick trap. Two liter bottle with four holes and one egg and almost a quart of water. The water doesn't use no more than halfway is what I was reading. So Hopefully that'll get some take care of some of our gnat population because I don't like them much. I'll show you something I found for the homestead. It's a doka pole. Let's see if I can get it right in front of the camera. There we go. So that's what's on the blade. All right. 
I had the thought, I've got extension poles to help clean the house and you can screw brushes on. And I thought, well, maybe someone makes a saw blade. There is, found it on Amazon. So this pole will go out to 23 feet. And it is great instead of climbing trees and using a chainsaw or I've used a deer stand that climbs and then pulled the chainsaw up. I'll go with one here fairly low, but if you don't mind the exercise, and I don't, I'm just going around and getting the dead limbs off. And like I say, I can use the workout in my upper body anyway. I just pick some time where it's dry. I do not do this for hours, but when you've got 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour, you can see how that's it. So this thing is fantastic. I mean, look, this isn't fully extended and how far you can go up and keep your feet on the ground and you're ready to run if the branch starts coming towards you. It's been a long day. <laughs> We've done so much today. Um, I was able to can four jars of tomato sauce. Um, yeah, there are some seeds in it because it was just tiring to take the seeds out of everything. And we're good with that. It doesn't bother us. But I'm getting ready to take them out and put them in the steam canner. And I'll take you there with me. So I got four quarts of tomato sauce. Um, and I only did half of the 25 pound box that I bought from the place that I work to add to my tomatoes because they're not ripening fast enough. Um, so we've got two and a half quarts of water in the bottom. Got the lid on. We're waiting for it to come up to pressure. I can pick it up. There they are. Aren't they beautiful? They're so red. They're gorgeous. So we're going to slowly bring this up to temp. We're going to keep it on a low temperature so we don't boil out the water. And New ball canner book. I um, did a lot of research because my ball canner book is probably at least 15 years old and I found out that I don't have to use this steamer this way um, I can do it for 15 minutes instead of 40 minutes right. for a regular wow. we're gonna do 20 minutes just because we are a little we're right on the cusp of 3,000 feet above sea level so we're gonna do 20 minutes once it gets into the green zone and then we're golden and we'll show you the product when it finishes. Here's your friend over your shoulder. This is Libby. Hey, baby. This is my girl. Thank you. She helps me with everything. She gets in the way a lot. <laughs> but she's good. Thank you. So we'll catch up with you when we're done with this. And we'll show you the finished product. It's been a long day. It's the end of the day. It's getting dark. We've had a long day. It took a lot of work to just get these four quarts of tomatoes, tomato sauce canned. And I'm getting ready to dish out dinner. And oof. I started it at, um, it, the, the direction said to do it for five, but I had more thighs in there than normal. So I did it for like seven. So now I'm going to give you guys a really great dinner idea. Plate. And a little bit of pasta. I think that'll be good. And then a wee bit of this wonderful, oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's lemon juice. You just put a little bit of this on here. And by the way, my cats are terrorizing my house. They're good at that. Then I need my clippers. Where are you? Here we go. Going to put chicken thigh on that. And then we will put some Parmesan cheese on it here in a few minutes. But it smells amazing and I love it because it's not a heavy cream sauce. You can eat this when you're on all kinds of different diets. 
So there is dinner tonight. And here is my tomato sauce. I only did half the box that I bought from where I work. Um, they were all Romas. You can see how beautiful and red they are. And we used the steam canner to can these and it was actually so easy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this day. I'm going to go down and watch Bruce finish out the day. So you can see we're having a soft rain tonight. I love living here. Yes, we do get a lot of rain, but we have a hoop house and we are very lucky to have it because we've grown so much and Bruce is getting ready to put it down for the night. It's a soft rain. 